within AI, we're interested, therefore, in the area of machine learning, artificial neural networks, convolutional networks, and deep learning. The synthetic data set generator is uh, in three major parts. The first part is a emitter description language, which describes how an emitter functions and the kind of pulse width parameters and scan patterns it has. The second component is a part that does the physics and propagation modeling and creates a data set of images and categories. And then that can be used in a uh, machine learning environment such as TensorFlow uh, for categorization type applications and other research. And what we have here is 14 classifications of civil marine boat radars, which are a bit ambiguous in nature. And we can see that there's uh, some areas where there is data that looks the same or is similar, and some of them are discriminators and some of them are ambiguities. They result in 14 mode lines or 14 different instances of different exchanges of those parameters that are valid. And we can see that some of them are in colored pairs because there's some ambiguity around about scan speed, which might result in uh, an ambiguous uh, assertion yeah, traditionally. Uh, our emitter description language, uh, the markup language, is able to set up parameters, and those parameters are able to be used for describing emitters um, in the 14 categories. Uh, they are used to calculate other parameters that will be used during the modeling. And the modeling itself uh, allows us to be able to calculate on a pulse by pulse basis um, different parameters, sequences in the behavior during a scan. And we can see that there's uh, two major components here. There's a scan gen part here, which is uh, about the uh, scan and beam widths. And there's a synchronizer component here, which is about the pulse widths and PRIs. And uh, what we can see is in this language is but we also have an element where per pulse parameters are calculated, like uh, jitter uh, or maybe RF jitter, depending on the parameters that were set uh, for each of the 14 cases. Uh, so what we have is that connected now into TensorFlow as a DLL and it is feeding a scenario generator with a propagation library, which is then generating all the uh, high bandwidth IQ data such that that can be used to create a data set. And that uh, data set is formed of images uh, using a sort of sliding window effect per pulse. And the image formation is about, uh, it's over the band two to uh, 18 gigahertz, which is 16 gigahertz wide. It has a red channel, which is the spectrogram, and it has a blue and green channel, which is the IQ uh, phase uh, time series. And uh, it has a, basically a width, which is around about 10 milliseconds, which is longer than any expected PRI to try and avoid blank lines. And it has a length, which is about a second, which is sort of long enough to see effects of scan durations. And the top right images there are what the data set actually looks like that's going to be used in machine learning. And the bottom right is actually some videos, which is an additional data set, but is video orientated. And uh, that's then subjected to a neural network, which is a fairly simple neural network, um, because there isn't complexities of multi-resolution, because we know what the digitization rates, we know what the times are, we know what the the, the, the gains are. What we're not dealing with is images at different zooms or different orientations. It's a much more simpler uh, situation in, in the first instance and therefore results in a simpler model. And what we have is two convolutional layers and a flattening layer and a dense layer. And uh, that actually results between the 14 classifications in a cross validation accuracy of 98.9% accuracy. What that actually is, is that the first layer is actually using filters which effectively become edge detectors and are feature extractors. There's a bit of a down sampling and max airing, which does change the resolution in a fixed way from a fixed resolution input to fixed resolution output. And then they're being subjected to a second stage of convolution, which is now kind of like feature arrangements of those original edges. 
um, downsampled. And then that's downsampled yet again. And what we might do is convert that then to something that we can use for a categorization layer. By, um, uh, and that essentially then becomes collections of feature arrangements that are mapped to edge detections. And that is where the 14 categories mapped from. So what we might think is from the data set that we saw originally was there was some variability in the classifications in frequency and agility, gain, pulse width and PRI modulations, and that there was also some scan speed and beam width variations between each of the categories. And what we might expect is that the parameters of RF and gain are being captured in some way in the red channel for discrimination, and that helps with scan speed and beam width discrimination between our data set categorizations, and that the PRI and the pulse widths are being caught in the green channel, and each of those might have a sensitivity, each of the pixels, therefore, to different PRI and pulse widths, and the lengths of those pulse widths and the patterns, and they all might perform a discrimination. And then for the scan speed and beam width, we can see that in the red channel and the blue and the green channel, gain over time is having an effect. And all of those things have been passed on to the later layer for the last categorization. So we can imagine how those parameters have been represented into the image. And here's just a clearer picture of the image on the left, with the feature extraction with the edge detected filters, a downsampling, another feature extractor, followed by a downsampling and a categorization map. And we can see this as moving from the activations in the pixels, either in the red or the blue or the green layers, to edge detections for features. Those features to be features of arrangement and those features becoming collections towards the categories. So we can imagine that one category maps to a number of feature arrangements and those feature arrangements may map to edge detectors. And that is how the categorization occurs. So that data set is available and uh, you can use that. Uh, the published work was also uh, there, so you can uh, see a little bit more detail as well on that. And uh, that uh, hopefully was of interest uh, as a start point for using more novel techniques towards uh, lower ambiguity in uh, RESM and ESM type applications.